So we've been talking about the two different mechanism types for ligand exchange. Dissociative ligand exchange, and in this case, the first step involves a ligand leaving, dissociation. And in the second step, the new ligand binds. So that's an association step. And then the other mechanism, the associative ligand, we have the new incoming ligand binding first, that's an association. And in the second step, the leaving group leaves. So that's a dissociation. Same products, same types of steps, just a different order. And so you can use kinetics, as you've talked about, to figure out which mechanism type is happening. But sometimes you want to be able to predict which mechanism will happen based on the starting structure. So today we're going to look at the factors that affect whether you go through an associative ligand exchange or a dissociative ligand exchange. So first, we can look at the electron count. If you have an 18 electron complex, it's got a full shell. And so you're much more likely to have a dissociation rather than a new ligand binding and bringing the electron count up above 18. If you're less than 18 electrons, then either is possible, include, but an association can occur. Then you can also look at your ligand splitting diagrams. So for a D6 low spin octahedral complex, and you're bringing in a new ligand for an association step, this doesn't gonna be able to happen because there's nowhere for those electrons to go. However, if I have a D2 complex, I have an empty orbital that's willing to accept those two electrons. So in this case, it's much more likely to do a dissociative, whereas this D2 complex is capable of undergoing association or dissociation. But at this point, more leaning towards association. So we can also look at geometry and sterics. So we have to take into account this as well as the electron count. So if we assume we want to see whether a ligand could bind, if an incoming ligand were to come in, it should be able to bind to this metal pretty easily. There's nothing preventing it. However, as you start to get to the octahedral complex, it's getting a little harder to get in there. And then if you go to an octahedral complex with large ligands, it's even harder to imagine a new ligand being able to come in and bind. So start looking at the geometry and the bulkiness of the ligands. And then finally, we look at the lability. If a ligand leaves easily, then the complex is more likely to undergo a dissociative step because that's our first st step of a dissociative ligand exchange. So things that can impact the lability of a ligand, the ability for it to leave easily, is if you have electrons in the antibonding orbital, that lowers your overall bond order because it weakens the electrons, the bond in the metal ligand sigma bonds. The Jan Teller effect, D4, D79, you talked about in a previous class that uh, weakens the ligands in the axial position. So you want to, these ligands are much more likely to leave. And finally, looking at the bond strength. So a charged ligand versus a neutral ligand. So this is neutral. And so it doesn't bind as tightly to a charged metal ion. So this would be more labile relative to the hydroxide. We can look at base strength. So an amine ligand versus the triethylamine and the ethyl groups are electron donating. 
So this is a stronger base. So these will be less strongly attracted to the metal, so a little more labile than the corresponding um, alkylamine. And then you can look at the type, carbon triple bond oxygen, carbonyl, uh, carbon monoxide is a pi acceptor ligand, which remember is a strong field ligand, and water is a pi donor. So pi donors are weak field ligands and weaker binding normally. So we'll see this being more labile relative to the pi acceptor. So when you go to look at this, you're going to have to take into account several factors. You're going to want to look at the metal lability, the Jan Teller effects, the bond strength based on the ligands, the geometry and sterics, and then you'll also want to look at the electron count. And then you'll be able to make a prediction whether or not a complex will be associative or dissociative, will undergo an associative or dissociative ligand exchange.